we generated around 560 plus million impressions organically those creating property cards for the first time for people owning houses in the rural areas we have a patent on a bridge technology which uh, but we were really guided by what we wanted it to be uh, in terms of the content consumption pattern has changed very competitive uh, very strong the objective is basically to democratize cancer care i see a very bright future for retail industry technology now it allows us to scale up we also want to help patients become more compliant if i look at the custom solutions market it's almost about 1500 billion dollars your customers will not continue to be with you if you don't change gear we had adopted digitalization much earlier within a very short span of time we are the number one operator in all of south india if, if you are reaching out to a lakh people today you would be reaching out to a entire globe tomorrow we got those two brands and then immediately got into few of the lfrs and there was no looking back Hey good morning everybody and welcome to the 27th episode of Asen Talks my name is Ajit Panikar and I'm an Asen member for 10 years and I lead Nova an air conditioning company and Pure Blue a tech enabled startup offering air conditioning solutions across the country and my co-host is Aleem how are you doing Aleem 27th episode my friend Absolutely, twenty seventh episode, and good morning, good morning, everyone. My name is Ali, Ali Merchant, and I run an advertising and marketing company called Synapse here in Mumbai. And very excited to have you on the show today with a very, very exciting guest. And all this is yeah. happening under Ascent Talks, run by Ascent. And to tell you a little more about Ascent, nobody better than Ajit. All right, guys, you for for all those guys who are joining us for the first time, Ascent is a not for profit expression of Harsh Mariwala. Chairman Marico Limited and his passion to identify high potential growth stage entrepreneurs and enable them to grow their enterprise and enrich their entrepreneurial journey. Launched in 2012, Asen today empowers more than 850 entrepreneurs across India. Asen is designed as a unique, powerful peer-to-peer -peer platform that leverages the power of the collective through self-facilitated groups called trust groups. which enables entrepreneurs to share and exchange experiences ideas insights and create a healthy ecosystem to learn from each other today's event a weekly event asen talks showcases asen members and their interesting entrepreneurial journeys so i think let's bring in our interesting guest today absolutely introducing anand anand baldava anand has spent 15 years in finance advising clients and finalizing deals to help them buy take over companies etc and now anand manages his family business which has two primary business verticals seba industries which focuses on manufacturing trading and exporting metal based tableware and kitchenware products and seba lifestyles which focuses on importing and warehousing and distributing over 6200 sku's from 18 plus global brands to trade and retail customers uh, in india uh, seba represents brands such as denby amifa Jamie Oliver, Darrington, Royal Prestige, etc. Everything from prep to cook to dine and to store and even bar. Okay, that's what Anand deals in. And Anand is also a very special person for me because he initiated me into a sense. So an initiator is basically somebody. The moment a trust group is formed, an initiator trains you how to work around the sense. So Anand, welcome to the show, and I'm very very happy to have you here. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you, Ajit. Thank you, Ali. Ali, I think you've done a fantastic job. I'm going to take the writing and probably use it for my future purposes. So <laughs> you've explained my business better than I have. So uh, thank you for that. I skipped three brands because I couldn't. <laughs> 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 no, Luigi, Luigi Bormioli was one of them. I figured that. <laughs> I don't know the other. Rabanti. I've done that in practice. <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, thank you very much. Uh, extremely happy to be here. You guys have been doing a fantastic job, so uh, happy to be of help again. Thank you, Anand. Anand, off the bat, can you tell us about what is Siba? What do you do today? What is the key USP? What is it that you know really makes Siba very, very interesting? 
Uh, sure. Uh, so essentially, we are in the kitchen product space. Uh, very, very simply, our customers, whether they are retail or wholesale, they use our products 365 days a year, three times a day, whether it is rain or shine, uh, whether it is a global financial crisis or whether it is a boom period in the world. So we are in the kitchen products business. Uh, like you mentioned, we've got two businesses on one side. Uh, we manufacture. That's the legacy I took over from dad. Uh, we are a OEM white label, private label manufacturer. We manufacture premium end kitchen products. We're not at the uh, mass level and we export them. Uh, that was one business. And the other business, uh, the, the, the manufacturing business is about 35 years old. And the slightly newer baby on the block is a five-year-old business called uh, Think Kitchen. And Think Kitchen is all about bringing international brands to India. I think that the logic uh, for Think Kitchen was simply saying we are in a country with a 1.4 billion population. Uh, there is about 50 million of that who are elite and affluent and who need access to uh, you know, premium kitchen products for whom money is not the only thing, you know, value comes first, price comes second, maybe. And we wanted to cater to that market. I mean, I can, I look at both of you and I've discussed this with you in many, many times uh, before. It's like, you know, if you have to go buy a, a fine pair of wine glasses, where do you go? Uh, unfortunately, there is no such place in India where one can go, whether online or offline, or if there are, there are far and few. So we are catering to that segment on on the on the premium kitchen side and on the distribution side. So all in all, you know, it's kitchen products, premium kitchen products, good quality products, uh, creating experiences in the home. Obviously, the last three or four years, fortunately or unfortunately, have have helped us uh, because people have spent more time at home, and you know that essentially uh, is our USP to make sure everyone enjoys that little bit of cooking or uh, spending time together as a family in home. And we're trying to, you know, be a facilitator to that. Wow. Well, Alan, tell me something here. You know, you said you're catering to the ultra premium segment of the entire market. So how big is this market here? I mean, is it really so big um, or is it growing at that pace? Uh, what actually gets you to only cater to that market or does it get too overcrowded in that space? Tell us a little about that space because none of us understand it very well. Yeah, so funny you ask this question because I spent the last five years trying to get a number and only two months ago, I got one number. Uh, and that was a proprietary research that we did. The market for premium, I wouldn't say ultra premium, the market for premium kitchenware products is about $400 million in India. Uh, wow. It is amazing. Uh, I mean, I was thinking about it and I use it in, in many conversations, which is you'd be surprised where we get orders from. We'll get orders from Kalimpong. We'll get orders from Islampur. I have not heard these cities, or if I've heard of them, they're tier three, tier four cities. So put all put all of them together. You're talking about a four hundred million dollar market growing up to a billion dollars in five years time. Uh, and again, this is not our you know back of the envelope calculation. This is proper market research that has been done. Globally, the kitchen space is a hundred billion dollar market uh, and okay. growing. They're not going to grow at you know uh, fantastic double digit, uh, triple digit numbers. You know this is a GDP level growth, but the benefit of that is like I, I mentioned earlier on. You know it's uh, whether it's 2008 or 2018, we're still going to grow. People are still going to eat. People are still going to eat three times a day, and people will need the product. So so that's how you know it compensates for each other. Fantastic. And, and Anand, like you correctly said, people are going to eat and they're going to continue. I mean, uh, there's, nobody's going to stop eating. But what are the changes you are seeing now? I mean, you know, as you as you spoke, you said wine glasses, fine wine glasses. Where do we go and buy it? So what are the changes you're seeing now slowly? Are people becoming more brand aware? Are they getting more conscious about what they're gifting? What is this market that you're seeing? A lot or, of things. Or just are... to add to what Aleem said, you know, is it just a gifting market or actually people buying it because I want to use great crockery? Is that also happening or is it all B2B? It, How does it work? No, no, it's, it's a lot of uh, self-consumption. Uh, I think it starts with self-consumption. And I think the concept of gifting is if I like it, then I'll gift it. Uh, generally, you know, you'll probably want to give something that you've used, uh, at least if it's a genuine gift, or if it's a true gift. So both are segments. Uh, now, if you uh, talk about it, Ajit Alim, in terms of what's driving it, it is the drive for education and awareness, you know, the need for education and awareness in this segment. Uh, and I use multiple examples. I'm sure Ali, we've probably spoken about it. You know, 20 years ago, the kitchen was one corner of the house. 
didn't matter what is happening over there didn't matter what it is cooked in as long as what comes out of there is tasty like one example the second example i know is my mom and full credit to her no offense and i hope she loves me she's used one kitchen knife her entire life the same thing with the steel ka handle and the plastic at the bottom and she's used that now you ask my wife she'll say there is a parer's knife there is a bread knife there is a chef's knife there is a two types of chef's knife that education that people have got thanks to social media thanks to the world becoming more closer because of internet thanks to shows uh, online uh, or stores on tv that education has helped us sort of bring this market to scale people have moved from you know even houses in india you move from having you know one bedroom kitchen to an open plan kitchen and when that happens you know a lot of things are happening around the kitchen plus like i said you know covid times people spent a lot of time in the home and they realized that you know it's not just about price it's not about meko sasta or tikau do it is about give me value which i know is going to last for me so it's about the lifetime value of a product like the lifetime value of a consumer the lifetime value of a product over the immediate benefit that i'm getting in way of a price discount uh, and that i think when the consumer understood that they started to get a little more educated uh, they started to get a little more aware that these products are available these kind of things are happening because you know indians have started to travel a lot more read a lot more when all of these happened that's when you know it made sense for them to start looking out for these products and uh, and we are lucky to be you know hopefully at the right time at the right place thanks and i just i want to i want to take you through your entrepreneurial journey you you are a second generation entrepreneur in your best days you were earning tons of money and you were having lots of fun in the us what happened to you man why did you come back <laughs> how did you So it's, I mean, it's, who in the right mind would want to come back? <laughs> how did you come back, and what did you? How did you get I, it so right? Tell us about it. It's fine. When when Alim talked about my background and he talked about selling businesses or selling, doing investment banking, I'm like, I've done everything from selling companies to selling utensils. So bring it on. Uh, so, so that is uh, that is my claim to fame, perhaps. But I'll. I, I went to study to the US uh because I wanted to do my MBA so this goes back 15 20 years uh, I wanted to do my MBA because I wanted to do more than what I have uh, educated by then at that point in time and I wanted to be in the thick of M&A because I had only done a little bit of M&A in India before and I said I'm on the periphery of things I need to be in the crux of things what do I need to do I need to do investment banking how do I go from a uh, a single guy average guy in india to become mna where does mna happen a lot new york how do i move from here to there so i thought of mba as a good stepping stone into the mba got there got lucky got a few jobs did all of that in my entire career ajit actually i've never really wanted to stay abroad uh, i've always i told my dad also saying you know what i'll study for two years i'll work for two more years and i'll be back in four agreed the four became 10 but you know it was never a, a thought in my mind saying i want to settle abroad i want to live abroad it never really excited me uh, i i like gully cricket more than you know uh, field baseball or field basketball or whatever you want to call it so so that's essentially that's what it was um, and uh, so that kind of took in i was lucky enough to get a good job was doing decent uh, in investment banking but then there was a family business which was also running and uh, like i say I don't know if I should, but you know, I spent my summer vacations at work. It's not child labor; I did it out of choice. But uh, you know, I spent summers, you know, going to the bank and seeing the numbers and seeing some of these products around. I mean, we were a home office at that point in time. It was a small business, so you've gone through that. You've seen the business, and so I think in 2012, my dad, when it had become 10 years, you know, it was starting at four, became 10. Dad said, "Boss, you are here, or not? I mean, otherwise, I'm very happy to shut the business down or sell it off." and i said i'll give it a shot for 2 years what's the worst that's going to happen i lose 2 years of my life but at least i won't have regrets later saying you know should have done that and uh, you know 2 years 2012 to 14 came down looked at the opportunity and i keep saying you know obviously the trailer was very different than the movie i saw but uh, you know at the end of the day still the 2 years have become 12 uh, the business is alive and growing i am alive uh, and dad is alive so we're all happy so i'm sure something's going right so that's the sort of the journey i think it was not a 
it was it was not planned but it was never too much to think about you know life is reasonably simple for me and i'm happy about that i think and the way it sound very simple ajit yeah go on <laughs> no 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 that is quite a visionary you know all he did was you know right? all he did was you know when i come to office just hang around see what is there take an add on credit card also keep it with you <laughs> just hang around and then after every four years it's telling me ab to aaja <laughs> it just work man dude <laughs> you know i've yeah, seen mac anand's father i can tell you is quite a thing because he's actually driven from bombay to london or something like that so wow, whole yeah. new story around that actually <laughs> but yeah anand but yeah. coming back so you make all the sound very simple you know i mean okay i did this yeah. and it was all very cool about it tell me what challenges do you face and what challenges are you facing today what is it what is the tough part of this whole business <laughs> okay challenges that i faced is easier than challenges that i'm facing uh challenges i faced was the first two years of coming back or maybe four years you know and uh, again i'll use an example i don't know how many listeners would have heard of lakshman silvania as an example you know the ad that came for lakshman silvania saying sare ghar ke badal dunga i came with the same mindset mm-hmm. saying you know i've i've uh, been there done that this little high you know you got a little halo about your head saying i'll change the business we'll modernize this and all of that and then you come into from a very organized uh, setup to a very very unorganized setup not only an unorganized setup an unorganized setup in an unorganized market so all the more difficult um at least for me and so when that happened there was a big challenge in terms of you know how am i going to go about it because everyone i meet is giving me gyan uh, and honestly that is one reason and i'm not saying it because we are on this platform but that was one reason for me to join i think because there was no gyan uh but everyone was giving gyan and i'll use an example i know we went and met one of our suppliers before him i mean like both of you have done a little bit of uh, background research on us as a company and me uh those guys before knowing anything said beta tu na dhande mein ye kar na i'm like lekin uncle aapko to pata hi nahi main kya karne wala hu so how are you advising me on something you don't know even i don't know about it so it was a lot of that that was a challenge a culture change was a challenge because a lot of the times you know people you i am of the habit to ask why now why in hindi is kyun or ye kyun kar rahe now ye kyun kar rahe can have two ways depending on how you saying it ye kyun kar rahe ya ye kyun matlab how dare you ask me ye kyun kar rahe humko tumko kya lagta hai humko pata nahi hai ki hum ye kyun kar rahe ya ye to sir ne bola tha to hum kar hi rahe and i have had some challenges around people and convincing them to you know understand why you're doing it in the first instance understand where are we going with it understand that the process is more important than you know i am doing it so that i think were the bigger challenges obviously dad and me we had our own challenges in the way that and this is a long answer uh, sorry i should have caveated that in the beginning but dad and i had a very today we are great friends but we had that first two years cuz let's be honest this is his first baby not by age but this is his first baby you know this is the most he spent most time in the business uske baad the three kids come somewhere in the line so he is extremely close to it and here i am try, trying to prove myself i've come into the business saying you know what if someone is taken me on board i got to prove myself and prove my metal both of us are equally i wouldn't say strong headed but here we you reasonably you know we focus on what we want to do both for the good but however the path is not the same his approach to business is very different my approach to business is very different and can i blame him no it was right in 1970s and 1980s and 1990s but the world has changed since then so very strong and it realized both of us realized that you know two people can't drive the same car at the same time one of us has to drive it so that led to the first two years were a lot of uh, and i was talking to i think kalim uh, ajit at some point you know i keep saying in hindi and like wo ye kahani mein drama bhi tha emotion bhi tha action bhi tha it's like a bollywood movie challenges in the early days i think the other challenge also was and again maybe not related to business as much as at that point in time the four of us were also in business mom me dad mom to a lesser extent but me dad and my wife and we were living under the same roof so four people in the same business under the same roof is not a good idea 
because you are only discussing business 24/7 and that was a challenge in itself you know and would i have guessed that this problem is going to come not at all i mean you know as you go along you realize ki ha ye challenge hai ab isko solve karte hai what's the next one sort of a thing so yeah i mean very many challenges mindset as a challenge if you think of it uh, you know putting the purpose why are we doing this before the how are we doing it or what are we doing uh, saying no to customers was a challenge in the sense that it was not a challenge for me but to the elder generation is are baba lakshmi ko kabhi na nahi bolte and i'm like no I you know. got to say you got to say no sometimes i'm sorry i mean i'm not going to bend over backwards uh, unreasonably to make sure you're happy yeah. uh, but that was a challenge so all of those i think i i'll probably club everything under mindset yeah. and that was you know a mindset uh hurdle that i had to overcome in terms of you know you know i'm here for the good of the business we will take care of the business perhaps not as much care as you can take but you know we've got some strengths we've got some lesser strengths and we've got some weaknesses but you know no one's going to be as good as you are in whatever way you know that package is different than this package and that's probably how i would uh, I, i would take it uh, luckily you know uh, mom came to rescue at some point in time in whenever the in the, the tempers ran high uh, and uh, all got solved uh, dad retired i think about uh, he actually i shouldn't use the word retired he doesn't like that uh, but uh, dad uh, you know he decided to take a back seat in i think four or five years ago and uh, but he still the chairman so i do report to him but uh, it's it's different you know i what we realized and sorry again it's a very long answer but what we realized is that he likes to be informed not involved and you find those things after you've gone through some discussion saying acha aapko ye chahiye na ho jayega and that sort of the uh, typical second generation first generation challenge the way i see it amazing but you know uh, you know anand i just want to understand from your business you inherited a manufacturing business uh you know controlling the entire value chain and then you decided to get into distribution of selling inter international brands they're two different business models and uh, sometimes they can get into loggerheads with each other does that really happen or do they actually complement each other or what are the difficulties in managing two different diverse portfolios like this uh i think they complement each other than hurting each other to be very honest ajit in the sense that uh, ultimately i'm still in the kitchen space and some of the so the way we sort of structured our relationship is that some of our customers are also our brand partners the imports business i call as brand partners so i have a two way street with them and now that gives them trust that you know anand is not going to run away or anand or siba or think kitchen is not going to run away because you know there are these two uh, levers one they can pull one we can pull uh, and that sort of helps uh us knowing the kitchen space us knowing the manufacturing space helps us a lot cuz they get comfort saying at least we don't have to teach these people about the basics of the kitchen the kitchen product the science behind it Amazing. they understand that bit of it uh so uh, when we looked at it that is the complement why did we get into that business uh was simply because one brand uh, asked us saying do you want to do it and uh, i was sitting here 2015 or 16 and saying try karne mein kya jata hai worst case kya again same logic with the two years in 2012 saying what's the worst that's going to happen that we might not be able to do it let me tell them saying i've never done it before i'm going to try it i'm going to invest some money i'm going to invest a lot of effort some money and i will see if i can make it work uh, and you know one thing led to the other and you know it's only grown so uh, uh, the only thing is now we are 35 brand strong uh, from the one brand that we started so uh, clearly it's it's all heading in the right direction now this is my perspective from there the brand's perspective they are all sitting and looking at india as a country and saying 1.4 billion people chalo 3 nahi 5 ya 10 percent bhi le lo cuz there are some reports which say 10 percent of india is affluent in elite that's 140 million people that's yeah. more than the population of so many countries put together in europe perhaps and that is a market which is not tapped and that's i mean again i'm talking of only 140 million people who are living a life like a european who are living a life like an average american and average european perhaps or even better for that matter in some cases right so all these brands are looking at that but they don't know how to do it they don't know doing business in india is difficult partnering with the right uh, partner is important should they set up greenfield should they do brownfield no one has a clue so that 
the requirement from the brand's perspective, our thought process on India and saying we've understood the kitchen market, we'll have to work a little hard, we'll have to put in a little effort. The fact that there was no one else doing it per se, you know, where would you go to buy it? There weren't many, many, uh, very many names or players in that space, online or offline. There were a few. So when you put all of this together, you're like, logically, it makes sense. Now execution, masala is in the execution, so we got to put work hard on that and see if we can, you know, make a case out of it. And slowly and steadily, we realized that, you know, if you put in the right effort, we made tons of mistakes, uh, whether it are people mistakes or product mistakes or brand mistakes. But you you learn along the way, and uh, you know, come today we realize that there is a market, there is a need, there is a customer, and I I keep saying in India demand is the least of our problems. Uh, our problem is to make sure that you know the serviceability, the delivery is there. And when we did all of this analysis, did some couple of uh, research research reports or got initiated some research reports, uh, we found that there's an opportunity, and that's how we kind of looked at it. I don't know if I'm answering a question, but you know that was sort of the the big picture. Super. Nice. Anand, I have a quick question for Ajit and both of you. Okay, we all three are ascent initiators. All three of us initiated. Let's do a small, quick poll. Or how many groups have you initiated? Okay, I'm giving you a count of three. Okay, I need to put your finger out. I know Ajit will need four more hands, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, let's just throw our numbers. How many groups have you initiated, Anand? <laughs> I I think I've done five or six. I don't know five or six. Ajit is doing double digits. Yeah, <laughs> yeah easily it's about twelve or thirteen. I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know about three or four. I think so. Yeah. Uh-huh. So clearly we have a winner in the room. But uh, Anand, tell us your ascent journey. Tell us about. It. I mean, you're a big advocate of ascent. We know. Tell us about. Uh, it. Hu- yeah, absolutely. Huge advocate of ascent. Uh, and I think it's been ten years. The joke, which not just applies to me, applies to the three of us, is that we are furniture in ascent. Uh, so <laughs> we're going to be we're going to be there for a while, uh, whether they like it or not. But I think uh, the I I started ascent as a uh, you know what's the harm, and a lot of things in life, work, everywhere. I'm like you know, करके देखते क्या होएगा, worst case क्या होएगा, अच्छा नहीं लगेगा तो ठीक है, we'll figure it out. But at least there's no regret later on. Uh, so I started with that saying I don't know what it is. I've never heard of it. Uh, it came in a magazine or something like that, and I applied, got through. Uh, and uh, since then, it's no looking back. Honestly, uh, I have changed trust groups, done multiple roles, and you know all the other uh, designations that that Ascent has, and gone through every bit of it. Uh, it's brilliant. It's sort of for me, even after you know, I think there's some mindset thing. Even after having that mindset, sometimes. uh i would say by default or subconsciously you still have horse blinders on my trust group helps me remove those horse blinders my trust group is great in the sense that ha uh, they they give me a tough time when i have to present to them and all of those things but that's what i want i mean if i wanted yes men then there are other groups that are out there for doing that ascent is that thing where they like anand why are you not thinking of this i'm like wow i never thought of that and why are you not thinking of your own brand and uh, all of those things so huge advocate it it's a it's a mirror a board and everyone uses the word saying it's an advice but absolutely for me it's a mirror saying look we have zero interest in your business all of the benefit that comes out of it is yours uh we just want to open up a mirror so that there is enough reflection of light some of that hopefully gets into your head and you know new ideas come to you sort of a thing uh, for me that is sort of the main purpose of us and they have my trust group right now is brilliant uh we meet uh, once a month sometimes twice a month if we have to uh, so that's what it helps as a trust group uh, and i'm not talking about the sn conclave and the uh, knowledge uh, sessions those are obviously added benefits i think the other benefit i've had is you know like ajit you know, or ali mu you know making a phone call and you're always available for that matter sanjay mariwala is there so there are so many people in sn i have shamelessly i'm sorry but i picked up the phone and you know said i just need to talk to you for half an hour i'll come prepared with whatever i have but i want your thoughts and it's always helped me so just beyond our trust group there's been so much other uh, ways for me to learn so uh, so i think amazing huh? it's great yeah super super anand actually we've just reached towards the end of the show to our 30 minutes but it's been fantastic listening to you and i'm so glad that you know you even brought out some of those Uh, you know some of those challenges that we don't want to even talk around in the open but you actually spoke about it and put yeah. it very gracefully yeah thanks a lot anand for yeah. actually being with us on asan talks it's been fun listening to you today thank you anand my pleasure my pleasure thank, thank you, you so much See thanks you a lot
Thank you very much. Oh man, that was good, man. So that's another you interesting story that we can. Yeah, super, yeah. man. I mean, actually fantastic. And uh, you can see that enthusiasm. No question. Khatam nahi hua. Uske pehle that the <laughs> flow starts. You know, he's like super into about it. So it's good fun, man. Absolutely good. But yes, guys. So we're then towards our the end of our twenty seventh show. And uh, if you like our shows, follow us on those various social media handles. We go live every Friday at eleven a.m. Share it with your friends. It's a uh, it's great to just share it with your entrepreneurial friends. But if you are a growth ready entrepreneur. and like how anand told us today about his ascent journey you want to explore ascent get to ascentfoundation.in fill in that application and that ascent team will get in touch with you there will be a certain evaluation process and if you clear through those evaluation we'll be happy to have you in our cohort so that brings us to the end of today's episode and we're going to see you next friday same time 11 am with another interesting story of an ascent entrepreneur thank you very much guys have a good weekend guys take care Take care. Bye bye.